what I'm thinking is setting up, um, I hope I can actually do this and not break anything. Yeah, that's not, ah, crap. What's up everybody, Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Stationeers. When we left off in the last episode, we built our new storage room, inventory room, with uh, complete with fabricator output and arc furnace output. And there's a couple more projects that I have on the list of things to do today. Well, no, I shouldn't say to, to do today. But I thought of some projects of things that we still need to do. First off, it may not be the thing that I tackled today for one reason, but I do want to alter this setup. Um, it's been suggested a couple of times from various different people to... I don't really understand it fully since we have this sealed with a pipe, but apparently some of the gases may still be getting out of out of this i'm not sure let me know what you guys think about all that because it didn't really quite make sense to me i was like the exhaust pipe output on the back is kind of where all the gas should be coming from so i don't know that we need to seal this anymore um however we could automate the arc furnace a little bit better to where this does this could just be glass it wouldn't actually even need to be a door but i would have to move this to where we could access it um but it wouldn't be that difficult because all we need is like a bin that goes up here and then some logic that just says if this has something in it, um, then to turn it on and to activate it. Um, and obviously the outputs are automatically going to go through the chute and then we could actually add a gas sensor that controls the vent more properly because this would be its own isolated, you never open it kind of thing. So that I do think will work out better. As for the main furnace, I don't know that we have to do anything different with this. My biggest concern, I wouldn't mind automating it entirely, um, but my biggest concern is the logic needed to do the open mold. I've looked through the wiki on the stats for it and the information behind it. I can't find a logic controller for the open mold. Obviously the activate is there. Uh, so theoretically what I'd like to see in the long run, but this may be a little bit cause I need a lot of room and I need a lot of planning, but, um, I'd almost like to have the, the pipe controller, like the pressure controller here and a chute and then maybe like a button or something like that, which is, you could set the pressure to whatever you wanted, turn it on, uh, put an item in here, throw the item in, and then toggle a button. Like you'd have a readout here that gives you the, the current pressure and temperature of the, the furnace. You push a button and it activates it. Then, you know, obviously you'd have a, an output that comes out here. So it's done. Then you click a button and it vents the thing. I'm, I'm looking at this one wall. I don't think you could fit all that on one wall, but it is kind of the plan. Um, obviously with this one, we would just have like a shoot for the arc furnace where we just throw it in there, turn it on and then uh, script, not script, uh, uh, circuit logic would, would control all that. So that's an idea that I've had. Um, I'm totally open to ideas in terms of implementing it. So let me know what you guys think. I may actually start doing a creative version of this world so I can just test around with some things and experiment before I actually try and, and build some of it. However, one thing that's growing to be a bigger concern... Oh, I also have a, a plan that I want to convert all of the hydroponic trays to the newer... I forget what those are called, but the newer uh, hydroponic bays kind of thing. I'd like to convert all those, but... I don't know if the room is actually geared with the script that it is to handle, like if I'd need more coolers or more radiators or whatever. I don't know if it can handle uh, quadrupling the output count of the uh, plants and stuff, but it's, it's something on my to-do list. But the bigger issue that we're probably going to tackle today is heat, because I'm noticing that we're burning through filters, CO2 filters, right? And 
the thing that concerns me about that is I don't know if there's a way to clear them. That's something that I would really, really could use you guys' input on. Um, I have a stockpile of them because I don't know what to do with them. Uh, but these guys, they're all empty. And I thought... Is it in my backpack? Yeah. I, I usually keep a spare on me. Now, ideally, I wouldn't even need to do that because we should be in a pressurized environment, which, as you can see, our external pressure is 50, which isn't bad. Um, and the atmosphere should be good, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, there's a little CO2, a little bit of um, pollutant, but nothing to, nothing to freak out over. So we should be able to open our helmet. However, we have the issue of heat right now. So what I want to do this episode is, uh, first of all, I need to move this stuff out of the way. And what I think I want to work on is attaching some more logic to the already automated, uh, vent control type system. Uh, somewhere. Maybe over here I could add it in? I just have to make sure that I don't tie into this line and I tie into lines off of this stuff. But what I'm thinking is setting up... Um, I hope I can actually do this and not break anything. Yeah, that's not... Ah, crap. Alrighty, so, yeah, I found out these two are, there's, the iron frame behind them has not been welded up, so I don't want to open those walls. Um, I also noticed, I'm not sure if it's just this game or not, because I've seen this happening every now and again in a couple of other things, but I'm also getting this kind of, like, sticking every few minutes or so where I'm doing something. You might notice it here and there throughout the episode where it just kind of, like, eh, and then moves on. Not really sure what's going on there. So, um, my fabricator is fast at work. Oh, it's almost done. Cool. With, because these won't take very long. So I'm, I'm working up all the, uh, logic kits that I need as well as I couldn't remember if I needed an actual thermal sensor or if the gas sensor will work or not. So we're going to try it. Um, but yeah, so we're making all the kits that we need or the, um, chips that we need. And I've set up three at the moment, wall heaters. I kind of just spread them out so that they would heat the room a little more uniformly. Um, I thought about putting them all the way around, but I was like, eh, I don't think I need to do all that. So the idea here is we're coming off of this power controller so that it keeps it all in the same circuit. There it is again, that little hiccup. Um, so I'm thinking I'm going to use this area for the logic. And what I'm basically going to do is kind of mimic this. We're going to take a sensor um, where we can get the uh, temperature readout. I don't know if I can get the temperature from the gas sensor or not. Probably. Actually, let's, um, let's find out real quick. Let's see. Let's turn off the... Uh, what's our O2 at? Or what's our O2 setting? 80? Hmm. Let's turn that off for just a second. Uh, gas sensor variable. So we have... Uh, we need to set this to ratio oxygen. So carbon, nitrogen, pollutant, volatiles, water, pressure... Oh, so, okay, we can do temperature, so I don't need that. Okay, cool. Um, it was after temperature ratio oxygen. There we go. All right, cool. I guess it triggered. That was weird. I'm not sure what that's about. Wait a minute. We shouldn't drop below 50 kPa. So why is, unless it's 50 over here. Okay, that's what it is. The gas sensor's actually picking up on it. All right, um, now, as for what temperature, I guess our suit readout is 20 so that probably should be our gold standard I imagine um, crap I didn't mean to do that let's just grab all this stuff um, yeah so some of these I don't actually need like um, I think I got two of the logic IOs because I was thinking 
I'd, I'd need the, uh, well, no, I, wait a minute, didn't I tell it to build a gas sensor? Oh, it's building, it. or oh, I can't, it's out of gold. That's actually fine, because we don't want one anymore. Alright, so, let me, uh, let me take a second and lay this out and see what I can come up with. Might I just say that it is very concerning how much cable you use in this game. <laughs> I use so much cabling, it's not even funny. Um, I feel like wherever, like, iron and copper are the two most vital things because... Like, iron make, it lets you build walls to keep your air pressure set up, and then, you know, uh, copper lets you wire everything. So, I realized that I was actually going a little bit more thorough than I needed. So, um, I had actually had the idea to do um, two comparators for a minimum and a maximum, and I realized the maximum would only matter if you had coolers set up to cool the room. If you're just doing heaters, then you just want it to go above the minimum and stop. So, uh, this ended up being much more simple. So, it's just a logic reader, a comparator, a memory unit, and a batch writer. And again, since this is a closed circuit on this power unit, it should only detect these three um, wall heaters, if I've set everything up correctly. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do gas sensor for the base pressure, um, and we're going to look for, wait a minute, this is the, yeah, it's a logic reader. Where's the acquired power? Where's all the stuff? Logic reader, gas sensor bay. Oh, wait, gas, gas sensor. Base, wait. Where, where's the other gas sensor that I have hooked up to here? I'm confused. What do I have hooked up here? Gas sensor, base pressure. Huh? Hold up. What is happening? I'm, I'm genuinely confused by this. Gas sensor, base sensor. Okay. 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 That's base sensor. Where is... What is base pressure? What am I picking up on? Base O2. Where is all this coming from? Are you powder? Compare. Where is that other one? Gas sensor. I hope it's not this. It, it shouldn't be... Hold on. We gotta check that now. Because I gotta figure out where this other... Why is this not turning on? Oh, <laughs> it helps if you actually hit the on button. <clears throat> Let's not talk about it. It's not picking up the wall coolers or anything, so I can't see it being in here. Nope, that's hydroponics. What am I picking up on? Unless it's because I haven't turned it on, maybe? Maybe because I have to turn it on first before it actually gets, like, kind of the registered. Let's try it. Okay, we turn that on. I'm very confused as to what this is picking up on. Wall heater, gas mixer, digital valve, vent flow. Okay, so that's all my stuff. Active vent, pressure regulator, conflict glass door, um, active vent reader, filtration. What? Pollutant tank? Wait a minute. I, I am so lost right now. Like, writer pollutant tank. None of that should be on this. Um. Okay. Gas sensor. Oh, I labeled them gas sensor. I still shouldn't be picking up pollutant tank and all that, though, because that's on an entirely different network, I thought. 
Oh, I piggybacked the line and I didn't put a power controller in between it. Ooh, bad on me. D did I do that? I thought I piggybacked off of this line. I, I hope you guys know how genuinely confused I am right now. I think I brought... I don't know. I did bring a line through. Because I needed to get to the gas data. So I piggybacked off that. Okay. I don't have any more wall sensors. so Or wall heaters. So it should be okay. That was a big boo-boo though. Um... So I actually need gas sensor, gas sensor, I guess. If I can find it. I can't, I didn't, there it is, base sensor. Okay, whew. All right, temperature, what are you getting? Temperature, you, okay, so I have to do some conversions here because it looks like it's in Kelvin? I'm so bad with, with temperature conversions. Um, so we're going to do everything else and then I'll convert it off camera. Uh, so the idea here... So we're going to go from the memory unit, which I had set for 20 because I was thinking 20 Celsius. Um, and then we want reader base temp. Why I labeled those gas sensor, I don't know. I really, really don't. Um, reader base temp. Okay. And so we're going to get the temperature. So if it's less than the memory unit then we want to activate or hold on we need the uh, compare temp and we want to go to wall heaters and we want to turn them is it on okay i was looking for activate it's got to be on all right so let me check the temps that i need to do and then we'll input that in the memory unit and we'll test this out Okay, so according to the math guru that is Google, I should have it set for 293.15 to get 20 degrees Celsius. Um, so the idea is if the base temperature is less than that, then we're turning on the wall heater. So with that, let's test this out, which that doesn't seem right. Oh, 293, I, saw, I thought I put 253. Hold on, never mind. So I was like, hmm. Oh, you dummy. It helps if you uh, actually power the dang thing. Uh, I got so caught up in doing all this stuff, I forgot to actually change this to be... Hello? Hello? Nope. Not that way. There we go. I found that if you have it set, then it kind of... Um, you can you can do it a little faster and you're and you go without power for less time all right let's turn this on and our heaters come on cool now we'll have to wait for it to, now, now i'm thinking three should be fine and there's also a heater right next to it which is something i do have to pay attention to so we might want to raise this a touch like maybe i don't know enough about the kelvin conversions to know uh, what would be a, a suitable, so let's just do something like one, maybe. And what that's going to do is, you have to think, the gas is going to be different way down here. Actually, what is the difference discrepancy? So, so far I've seen about two degrees difference. Let's see what it is down here. Probably about the same. So it's about two degrees different down here um, than out here. So we may want to bump that up by one. Because it was, what, 13.2? And it's about... Let's check the sensor. It's about nine here. Um, so let's do three. Let's try that. Let's do... Yeah. Or that should be fine. It'll just be a little cooler. It'll just be a little cooler. So that should work in theory. Let's go ahead and wall all this back up. And I just kind of removed all this to check it and see kind of what was going on. I wasn't really sure where I wanted to put everything. That does concern me a bit that I didn't close the circuit here for 
down in the other room, though. I Filter. really... Low. See? Filter. Critical. See? See? I hate that. I hate having to do that. Um, especially then when I have to waste resources by making another one as a contingency backup type thing. It's really annoying. Um, speaking of annoying, where is the filter? CO2. There we go. I mean, they are too bad, but it's five iron. That's like uh, five sheets that I won't have anymore. So uh, let me know if you guys know of a way, though, to somehow recycle them. I would like to, like, empty them kind of thing, like clean the filter uh, so that I can keep reusing them. I think that would be a very useful... It, like, it may not be in the game yet or something. I imagine since they just added the... Um, I imagine since they just added the durability to filters that it may not be in the game yet, but I'm kind of just thinking long-term wise, it's probably got to be something that they're thinking about doing just so that, you know, um, you can actually make you, because I mean, that's, uh, there is a point like with most things where you'd throw the filter away. Ooh, we're getting, uh, we're getting pretty low on power though. That's something we'll have to watch. Um, but I think it'll be okay because once we heat up the gases, I know these are actually kind of a, a power hog, the, the wall heaters I've heard are kind of power hogs. Um, I feel like I wish this was Minecraft where I could just sleep and then it would be fine. Um, what's the temp like over here? For, actually it's heat, it's heating up pretty good to be honest. Um... I know the heaters usually work pretty good. So so that's kind of cool. I'm, I'm liking that. Because now we, we not only have a filter system set up to clean the air. Now grant you, the one problem that I have with my filtration system so far is that there's no throttle to it really. Uh, so once this starts pulling air out and this puts air in, but it won't stop until the air ratio is perfect. Um... I could do a more expansive logic system setup where this doesn't come on until a certain uh, amount or, or this turns off at a certain pressure, you know, like, um, if there's a minimum pressure, then don't pull the air out, you know, something like that. I could do something like that. Um, actually that wouldn't be a bad idea. Let me actually, I know I just moved these guys. Um, what I'm what I'm thinking, in case that wasn't obvious and you guys didn't quite catch where I was going with that, it may be more efficient. I want to keep an eye on power though, because that's not looking too hot. Um, it may be more efficient to set this up in a way where there's the minimum pressure and the max pressure, but th it may be more efficient to set up a if the pressure falls below this to turn on this, otherwise turn it off kind of thing. Essentially what I'm thinking is maybe a second one of these max pressure ones and doing a, well, I don't know. Cause what I'm basically thinking is a way to set it up to where if you're below 80, turn this on, if you're above 80, uh, that would still be locked in a loop, though. I was going to say, then turn this on, but that won't work. Anyways, what I was kind of thinking was something like if it's, um, if it's above or below the minimum, but above, no, that doesn't make any sense. If, if it's below the minimum, turn this on. If it's, but leave it on possibly until the max, I guess is what I was really going for. So fill the room to the max turn this off kind of thing and then uh, if it falls below this pressure to turn off this vent and this would automatically kick back on essentially what that would do uh, let me double check our power Ooh, our power is doing too really bad come on heat up heat up so you'll turn off it's 0.7 so probably shouldn't take too much longer but ooh, we're eating power of course it had to I had to do this like before the sun came out. Oh, the sun's coming back up now. That's not good. 
that kind of means that um, that kind of means that we're at a stalemate with our power at the moment with this the way it's currently set up. Actually, it might be pulling more. I'm not sure. Can I? Helmet opened. Okay, so technically we're okay. Yeah, so the wall heaters are too much actually for this to handle because the sun's coming up and this is still losing power albeit slower but still um so i don't think i can pull this off right now that's going to be an entire rework of the system essentially um what i really need to do though is probably slap a power controller somewhere over here do i have room over here i do i could put it maybe right there right or right there or hmm uh, easiest would probably be to attach it, like, right here. Close that junction and then go off of the power controller and do a corner wrap in there. That's probably the easiest way to fix that problem and keep the vent system on a closed circuit. I really do need to do that at some point, though, because that's not a good idea to have that um set up that way tell me we're gonna make it oh we're doing not too bad it's it's starting to tick back and forth now and we're pretty close all right cool so uh with that we can actually take our equipment off now grant you that means oh i could keep my backpack on yeah that'll work i'll keep my backpack on uh so yeah that's pretty cool we can actually walk around our base now and be totally comfortable about it um, but what I was getting at with the vent system, again, in case it wasn't too, too clear, was I need a minimum pressure set up where the vents don't turn off, or not don't turn off, but the, the, the vacuum vent that pulls from the room won't pull after a certain point of pressure. That's what I was really looking for. That's what I really need is something to control that to where it doesn't bleed the room dry it just pulls and then like this this would push more air in and then that would pull out a bit more and that would push more in that kind of setup so what i probably should do is this is set to where if the ratio is wrong but it's above 50 to pull Hold up, I could probably do that with this setup. I'm gonna work on this for a second. Okay, so I've reworked it and I genuinely have no idea if it's gonna work or not. Um, it didn't actually require too much changing. Um, by the way, I did have to disable the heater now that we've got the heat where we want it, uh, because it drained my power all the way down to zero. All of my area power controllers were dead. The lights were off. So I had to turn these back off just temporarily, if, if nothing else, um, until we can get what I actually have set up or going to be set up. That's just a memory unit. I don't need that. Um, is I went ahead and added a switch over here. And it's called uh, heater toggle override because I'm going to add a control somehow through the logic here uh, that basically says if this is on, then don't do any of this, essentially. Um, something like logic reader compare unit equals one if it needs to be on, but then have um, like... I could do a batch writer or a, a comparator to where it adds like a com I could have a a reader, a logic reader for the switch, a comparator with or a, a, a math chip that does this one with the reader to add the two together because if this is zero and this is zero, then this won't uh, this would be zero so you don't need it to be on but basically what i would have to do is that comparator would be equal to a memory unit with one is the idea so that if um if this was on i mean if this said that it needed to be on then it would turn on but if this said it needed to be on and this was on 
then it would be off. Now the only problem with that that I can see is if I turn this on and then this goes to zero, it would still turn on, which could be a problem. Actually, the simplest solution, I don't know why I didn't think of this before, is to just have this set to a uh, reader and, a, and a, a writer and actually control the batch writer's power. So just turn this off when this is on would be the simplest solution. I don't know why I didn't think of that before. Um, and I have, what is this? I have a reader. I need another logic unit to do that. Um, at the moment, I'm going to let it lie, though, because I want to focus more on this. So what I ended up doing here, and I hope it works, but I don't really know. I also don't know why my power is, like, bleeding now, because I turned off all of my heaters. Uh, but it was at, like, 30-something. Nothing's really running. The sun went down. Now I'm down to 22. So other than just maybe if all these power controllers are trying to charge, I'm also detecting a problem here because this light is off. Um, this LCD is off. This area controller is actually red, which if memory serves, doesn't it means it's not charging at all, uh, which is a problem. I'm wondering if I had a blowout somewhere. Yeah, see, that's not... That's just empty. And it's in the on position, it looks like. So I don't get what that's doing, because this is still running. So that power controller has to be okay. But this down here is completely gray, which I don't even remember what that means. So we've definitely got a power problem going on. We had something happen. Um, it's possible that there's... Oh, now that's gray. So it's possible that the power is being pulled somewhere else from something else. But anyways, uh, so I don't know what's going to happen here. We're down to 19. I think it's all the batteries probably trying to recharge is probably what's draining everything. Uh, but anyway, so the quick breakdown of this, it really all starts over here. I added a different, comp I removed a the logic writer and I added a compare unit and I added a math and a memory unit. So the memory unit is two. The compare unit is checking this math node against this memory unit that's set to two. And this math unit is basically adding the base minimum pressure and the ratio and adding those together. So if the pressure is above, I also adjusted this to be greater than, and this is um, greater than or less than the max pressure. Um, so this one now is set to where if this, if this one is below the max pressure of 80, then it should turn all these on. And then when it hits the max pressure, it turns them off. That's the idea. Uh, and then the minimum is being added together with the ratio. So if it's um, above, because this is now greater than, so if it's greater than the minimum pressure of 50 and the ratio of oxygen is below the threshold, then turn this vent on. So what that would do is keep the minimum at always at 50, and when it goes down to 50, it'll be below the greater threshold, so this will turn on. That's the idea. Now, I don't have a fail-safe at this point to where if the pressure goes above that, um, but the odds of it going above that before it gets contaminated and the system tries to drain, I don't think is really high. So we turn that on and nothing happened, which is exactly what we want. And when we turn all these on, then they should, uh, the flood vent should turn on. That's the vacuum. Isn't that the vacuum? Oh no, that's the flood vent. Okay, so this is the draining one. This is the fill up. And how are we at 90 now? Hold on, something's not right. We shouldn't be at 90. Temperature low. It should never get to 90. What are you doing? Low. Turn off. And uh, that's really weird. All right, so that did not work. Uh, but I think we're about out of time for this episode, so I'm calling this a vent control fail other than uh, the heat. The heat we got working, but we need more power for it to run properly. I'm not really sure what went wrong there, unless I've got something connected to the wrong vents. I might have mislabeled something. I'm not really sure. 
Okay, so as a quick side note, um, yeah, it actually is working now. I'm not sure what happened unless I was just too close to the vent, and so my pressure readouts like this are high, but when, when it balances out in the room, that's got to be what's going on. So, um, overall, it's working. We're, we're working at this point. So it's a, it's staying right at 80. And then if we get the wrong ratios, oh, I don't need, I don't actually need that. I can check here. So if we get the wrong ratios, um, and the pressure is above 50, then these should kick on. So I think that'll help us out in the long run. I think it'll be a little bit better. Okay, so last time, promised, I just wanted to say that I kind of did a temporary fix for this. Um, I was I was tinkering with it. So I tried to do a writer that would control the batch writer, but I found that it wasn't actually changing the value of the batch writer. Um, so I'll have to work a little bit harder to configure this to where it can work as an either or, and this can override this. But for now, I've just disabled the sensor setup and it's just controlled directly by the toggle switch. Uh, so we can turn it on and off when we need to. Um, so I think that'll work best for now until I can get a more comprehensive setup for, uh, how we want to do all that. But with that, I'm definitely going to wrap up here for today. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. And this is really the end of the episode. Promise. So I will see you guys later. Peace.